Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This evening, we will be discussing a technology called Freenet. This will be a relatively in-depth introduction and analysis of an advanced proxy network, an intranet, an internet within the internet, if you will, which political dissidents, scientists, hackers, programmers, and individuals who are generally opposed to national and statewide surveillance utilize for the purpose of circumventing uh, analysis of the, their internet network traffic and they use it for file sharing. It is anonymous, it is very very effective and it is called Freenet. So, to begin with we will acquire the requisite download. A simple Google search will take you to the Freenet project which is the home of Freenet where the download is you can you can download it here I'm currently on Windows for the sake of simplicity however I will attest to the fact that it is much safer if you run it under a Linux distribution uh, Windows is inherently insecure there's an old systems administrator joke that Windows is a spyware with an operating system attached so now that we have it we will go ahead and As you can tell, I already had the installer downloaded. I uninstalled it for the purpose of the creation of this video. So, I'm going to go ahead and install it. You need Java to run it. Without Java, it will not download. So, just go down to the... It's not the one I want to go to. Home. Go to the home here. There we go. Here's the page I was talking about. If you're running a um, Linux distribution, they have step by step instructions as well as to how to uh, download it via the command line. This is something that we will be getting into shortly, but you have to configure your proxy network to go in the local host and uh, the port 8888 so you'll want to do a loop back and we'll explain that in, in depth in a moment but the reason we're stuck on this page for a second is I wanted you to get a good look at it because if you have any issues whatsoever the actual developers of Freenet can be contacted here you can where is it at chat with us and I've literally I've, I've talked to the gentlemen who work on it, the programmers I've assisted in the debugging phase. I've actually found in previous versions bugs which have been corrected in the newer version. So if you have any issues whatsoever, just feel free to hop on here, freenetproject.org slash download, and go to the help section and the chat with us. Now, I already have Java installed, so it's going to automatically launch and install and launch. Now what is Freenet? You're probably wondering what exactly it is. Well, it's going to take a little while to get integrated into the network, so while it does, we'll do a brief synopsis of the purpose of it. As I said earlier, it is for anonymous communications. It is an intranet, meaning it is completely separate from the internet. It is the internet within the internet. It is... Um, can be used to access the outside internet, the clearnet as it's called, although it is not generally uh, recommended as this can perhaps breach your anonymity. Now, this does get a little bit advanced into the topics that we'll be discussing, but I want to first point out the URL is localhost, which is 127.0.0.1 on port 888. So, let's begin. These are the security settings of what you will want to configure. Now, depending upon the manner in which you wish to conduct yourself, digitally speaking, and how you wish to utilize this technology, will determine which security setting you should choose. Do keep in mind that the lower security settings are much, much less safe, but are a lot faster. So if your main concern is uh, legal content or perhaps sharing illegal content but relatively mm, unimportant books, movies, 
that um, you would normally do on, let's say, uTorrent, feel free to choose low security settings. Personally, I always go to the custom security settings. And you always want to keep Freenet up to date automatically. And by default, enable this universal plug and play. Now, here's an option which is uh, quite interesting. On the initial configuration of the technology of Freenet, you will want to connect to strangers unless you have friends who are already connected and you know their their SKU as it's called. Chances are more likely than not you don't. Now, if you want to read when you configure it yourself, you can scroll down here and or or hit pause and it will give you some options as to and it won't let me. Yeah, there we go. Gives you a little bit of an idea of, of the possibility of what could breach your anonymity or relative anonymity, I should say. Now we'll connect to strangers to begin with, but do remember, and I always select normal because uh, I live in a relatively free country, but I would like to make it more difficult for others to monitor my communications. Low is for maximum performance, but that would. Mm, to an extent negate the whole purpose of the technology if you don't care if they're you know could find out what you were doing now here we have the options of encrypting your swap file and the information of which you are downloading I always go to high rather than maximum high it gives me the ability to set a password do note that the password is necessary each time that you turn on the network so if you stop Freenet and then turn it back on, it is required that you enter the password, otherwise you will not be able to access your downloads. Maximum is a better option if you are utilizing this technology for the sole purpose of illicit conduct. However, uh, my main problem with the maximum is the fact that it is a temporary encryption key and that everything is wiped on restarting um, Freenet. So you lose your downloads and uploads, but it is the safest option. We will, for the purpose of this endeavor, select hi and do one, two, three. That is going to be our password. Hit next. Now, this page allows you the ability to set the data store. The manner in which Freenet conducts itself is unique in the fact that it is what is known as a decentralized and dynamic P2P anonymous network. The fact that it is decentralized um, entails the necessity of having to allocate a portion of your hard drive to the data store as a whole. You are in essence um, providing individuals who utilize the network, other people, the ability to encrypt and store their stuff on your computer to the extent of which you state here. Now, why would I want to do that if they're conducting illegal activity on this network, if they're using it for illicit purposes? Well, not necessarily is it a given fact that they are you know, indeed using it for illegal purposes. But the data store is great in the fact that the information in the network, the internet, rather than being stored on a server, the fact that it's decentralized and dispersed with all the individuals on the network, because to be a part of the network you do have to contribute some sort of data store, some, you know, be it a gigabyte or a terabyte, you have to allocate some amount. It allows the data to be spur dispersed and makes it exponentially more difficult for this uh, technology to ever be circumvented or shut down by a government agency. Whereas if you take perhaps the Tor browser bundle and the Tor proxy network, whereas uh, if you are relatively inclined toward anonymity enhancing technologies perhaps you heard about in I believe 2013, the freedom hosting servers were eventually traced uh, down by a I believe it was a Firefox exploit, a zero-day exploit taken advantage of by the Federal Bureau of Investigations, and they tracked the Freedom Host servers to Ireland, I want to say. Regardless, half of the Tor network went down for the time being at that, at that time because they were able to seize the servers and thus the content of the data, which was being you know, readily dispersed to the individuals. Whereas, 
they would they would have to literally instead of confiscating and seizing an individual or a few servers and shutting down the entire network or the majority of the network they could not in theory shut down freenet because they would have to confiscate every machine that is connected to the network that allocates space to the data store so we'll just go random 28.2 for the time being now the, do note that the larger uh, portion of your allocation of the data store to the network the faster it is the network will work on your computer because you will have more information and more data natively cached on your computer so instead of having to search the world over for something that you may be searching for on Freenet there's a better you know statistical probability that you actually have it in stored locally so no monthly internet connection Freenet will automatically uh, go to half of your down download speeds slash upload speeds what this is you're not only allocating uh, your hard drive or a percentage thereof to the network you are also allocating bandwidth to the network internet speeds which shouldn't be a problem given the fact that we have high speed internet in most parts of the world and you probably don't use nearly what you have anyways you will have excess if you have an unlimited data um, on your your ISP provided network then you probably have more bandwidth than you're using to begin with the excess can be allocated toward free net now this is the initial page on Freenet, the starting page. We are going to switch to the advanced mode. Now, notice how it says security levels down here. And we opted for normal earlier and then high. So we're, we're good right there. Now, what is 8 of 14? You're probably wondering. Well, we are currently connected to zero friends, but eight strangers. The longer that we are connected in the network, the better the integration will be. It will eventually get up to 99 or 100, and we can connect up to 99 or 100 strangers. We could also connect to friends if we have individuals with a node reference. Um, P these would be need to be people that we know personally, be it online or, you know, an old friend, a personal acquaintance. You do not have any additional enhanced anonymity if you are connecting to a node reference that um, is unbeknownst to you, someone that you don't actually know in real life, if you will, because there's a possibility that it could be a government agency, you know, the FBI, CIA, or the Department of Defense. It could be a malicious hacker, so don't, don't just connect to people that you don't know under a friend network, the darknet mode. So we will go to configurations and course settings. The reason being is because one of the main complaints of this network is the speed in which it operates. It is inherently slow and that is a price to be paid with enhanced anonymity. However, there are a lot of ways in which we can enhance and increase the speeds. So I will show you how to do so. Notice how we are in the uh, advanced mode. Okay, it's easiest to do this in the advanced mode. And I will show you just a few options and configurations of which you can change to speed up your uh, free net. Now, throttle local traffic. With this, it is on false. I'm going to put it on true. If enabled, LAN and localhost traffic will be subject to bandwidth limiting, meaning local area network, everybody on your Wi-Fi network or Ethernet network connected to it, everybody connected to the particular router which you're utilizing at the moment, including yourself, will be throttled the bandwidth for this network. So if you're on a public Wi-Fi utilizing this, yes, you will be throttling other people's um, bandwidth. But they, won't, they will be none the wiser. You can also uh, manually adjust the upload and download bandwidth limit to find out where you would want to put that at, you would want to go to, I believe it's speed, speedtest.net, and you can determine after running a speed test, you can start now and determine what your download and upload speeds are, and then uh, change them accordingly. What I just did, you never want to do, but given the fact that this is for educational purposes only I'm not worried about it but what I did can theoretically uh, easily breach your anonymity and that was opening up the web browser and going to um, 
a clear net site while I'm using that web browser for Freenet. If you're going to utilize Freenet with Firefox, I would do so um, for the sole purpose of Freenet on Firefox. I wouldn't go clear net, dark net, clear net, dark net because you can have cross cookie contamination and you don't want that. But this is for a video, so we will run the test, pretends it runs, and it'll tell you your download and upload speeds, and then you can adjust them accordingly. So you could literally utilize up to 100% of your download and upload speeds all toward Freenet, which would make it, you know, extremely fast. You can also change the amount of RAM to dedicate to temporary buckets. That will help increase it by increasing the RAM. You can scroll down. Size of the client cache will also speed it up because once you go to a site, it stores it in your client cache, and the larger the client cache, obviously, the more sites you can you know, store locally, so it will go back to it quicker. There is an option up here that I'm not seeing at the moment, and I'm going to switch back to simple mode because I wanted to see it, but I don't. I'm not quite certain at the moment as to why it is not populating, but generally, and it, and it could be because it's a newer version. Uh, the version I'm used to is an older version, but generally the older version allowed the opportunity to manually configure your RAM allocated toward the Freenet. Um, I would allocate, you know, at max probably two gigs, which is overkill. I think it comes pre-configured with like 200 megabytes allocated, you know, of RAM toward the network. But if you were doing, you know, if you have a huge data store or you're downloading a thousand downloads in the background, the larger your data store or the more downloads, the higher you would want to set the the RAM, you know, allocation of RAM toward the network. So you could browse Freenet. You can go to sites here. This is great because it's it's censored. This will have extremely illegal content as well as the general, you know, legitimate legal content as well. This one, oh, forgive me. This one actually breaks it down categorically. This one removes the most offensive content. This one has everything under the sun. Uh, things that you would generally not find on the clear web or the normal internet of which you're used to given the fact that it's so highly illegal that it could potentially um, have the FBI knocking at your door depending upon what you utilize this technology for. So I'm not going to go in depth as f you know each of these if you are if you're curious as to how it works obviously you'll configure the setup yourself. You can do a general search on Freenet. I don't use it quite often if you know a key, you can click here and you'll go straight to the page. We are going to, to give you an example of what it looks like, we're going to go to one. And this is what it looks like when you're switching to a page. You can download something or fetch it, which is only accessible through the download page. And you lose it if you lose the master password or if you uninstall Freenet, which is generally the best option. Now, it does store it unencrypted that is a potential risk as well. So I would I would definitely recommend, highly recommend, absolutely recommend utilizing full disk encryption and a Linux distribution if you're going to be configuring this network to run on your computer. It is best theoretically if you leave it running 24-7 because it keeps you integrated with your peers in the network for optimal speeds. Messages here are just telling me about updates because I'm new to the network and it's running the updates in the background. Now it's slow right now and it, it's seemingly taking forever to run and I realize that. However, with the proper configuration of the advanced settings that we had gone over a second ago right here, if you change the bandwidth, download, upload, and increase the data store sizes and the RAM, it will be quite fast, I assure you. The purpose of this was this skew right here. We're going to copy that and we're going to go uh, well, to get back to the original page, localhost colon, and that's the port 8888. And what I like to do, and I'll show you in a minute, but that's where you would want to paste the key. 
you can fetch it and now as you see it's going back to that page so you're probably wondering what is that well that's freenet's version of url it's like a 64 character um, skew that's alphanumeric and basically gibberish in nature so it's much more difficult to navigate the network but there are ways in, in, until you learn you know get deeper into the network and learn how the technology operates and some of the methods of which we exchange SKUs. I'm not going to go in depth and show you how to utilize Frost but there is a message board that you can download you can google it Frost for FreeNet and you can configure it and people trade the SKUs that way you can access you know sites easier that way but you know these right here are the main areas of it um, let's see here let us go to the configurations of Firefox. Here's what I personally like to do whenever I'm configuring a proxy network or an intranet or an anon anonymous network, if you will, to a particular web browser. I always like to clear all history before I install it so there's not any cross-cookie contaminations. Don't let them know anything about your um, tracking preferences. I never remember history in case, you know, my data is is seized you know just for security security purposes I also where is it at let's go network configure how Firefox connects to the network and that's the manual proxy configuration 7657 is actually for I2P which is a different different network we're going to set it there Let's see here. Let's go. You notice how it's it's not going out to any other website now. It's not going to Google. It's not going to AOL. It's going right back here. The reason being is because we changed it to, and this is a safer option, to where you don't have access to the outside internet so there's no mistaking no accidentally clicking it and having the cross browser contamination or cross cooking contamination that's what I like to do just some advanced configurations and in, in Firefox and I always delete the content oh and another one where are we at here this one is probably not thought of very often but I like to when we get there, hmm. I like to disable the Firefox Health Report and the Crash Reporter, and the reason being is because I don't want if my network somehow crashes or there's some sort of error in the background, I don't want it automatically sent to Firefox. I'm not 100% certain what they would be able to view in the event that it was sent you know, back to their web servers. I don't know if it would be encrypted to where they couldn't view what I was doing or they could but the purpose of this is enhanced anonymity so this is where Freenet is accessible and I will give you a warning first and foremost that this technology has the potential to be misused for illicit purposes so I would stick always stick with Nerdageddon rather than Linkageddon this is what I use it for I like getting books uh, movies things of that nature without my internet service provider being able to tell what I'm doing because if they know you're using uTorrent they they can potentially throttle your uh, your internet connection and that's obviously not something that you would want you're paying for it it's yours you can use it but as you can tell you've got a collection of books movies blogs you can also host a website for free which is pretty cool and given the fact that it's within an intranet the only people that would be able to access it are those of who you know are on the network and your friends who you, you gave the skew to. So, different things to keep in mind. And 
we will okay. yeah. do want to say that this network is quite popular in certain circles quite effective it has the potential to be mis misused and you can do time in federal prison so if you conduct yourself in an illegal or inappropriate manner I am in no way, shape, or form responsible for your actions. You are a sovereign individual with free will and free choice. The freedom to do as you please. With knowledge comes power. With the power comes responsibility. The responsibility to act according to the conduct and ethical manners of which your society places upon you. You have a certain responsibility in the social contract to conduct yourselves in a civil manner. If you utilize this for illegal purposes, you put yourself in jeopardy of federal prison. So, I thank you for watching this video. I hope you learned a lot. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please just leave them down at the bottom of the link, the bottom of the video, and I hope you have a wonderful day.